Princess Alice stayed a prisoner in the sanatorium for two painful years. She pled for her freedom frequently, but her requests were always ignored. When she was ultimately allowed to leave, she was completely over her disappointing family, who had almost abandoned her, and so she wished to be left alone at last. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. The only person that she was still in contact with was her mother via letters. She had no contact with anybody else and she refused to talk to them. They had betrayed her once and they wouldn't gain her trust again that easily. Alice settled into a simple and obscure life in Central Europe after her time locked away. She stayed here for the years to come, but in pure Alice fashion, her entire life would be thrown upside down once again. Princess Alice would have loved to have been left alone, but World War II made that very hard for her, if not impossible. The distance from her husband was the worst it has ever been. She had hardly seen him for a decade of her life, but she still desired to be with her people. During the time of fighting, she settled in Athens. This was while the rest of the Greek royal family fled the country for South Africa. It would have been easy to hide in palace walls, but that was not Alice's fate. She was ready to work and she wanted to help. Alice had been living in a small and humble flat, which was a far cry from her extravagant beginnings in life. She moved to the former royal palace in the middle of the city. It was here that she began providing help to the people impacted by the conflict in the city. This became the base of operations with the Red Cross. The help she offered included soup kitchens, as well as smuggling and medical supplies into the country from Sweden. She was able to get away with this by using her sister Louise, who she would say that she was visiting. Princess Alice worked tirelessly to help the people of Athens, which became ever more a difficult task as the war raged on and she was devastated by what she saw. Mussolini fell in 1943 and as a result the Axis forces occupied Athens. This was a dark moment in history for all involved, including Alice. The Germans deported 60,000 Greek Jews to concentration camps and only 2,000 of these people survived, while the rest were brutally murdered. There was only so much that Alice could do against these brutal forces. She wanted to help protect her people and she really did try her best. Alice's two daughters were married to Germans and so they presumed that she was one of them. This is how she was able to get away with staying behind in Athens. She was even treated with respect as a result, but little did they know that she had an ulterior motive. A German general personally paid her a visit and asked her if there was anything that he could do for her, and he must have been very surprised by her feisty and defiant response. Despite her German son-in-laws, Princess Alice was stubbornly opposed to the Germans, so when the general asked what he could do for her, she looked him in the eye and she barked back, you could take your troops out of my country. That is just the kind of woman that Princess Alice was. Her demand was a courageous, if not a stupid one, but there was more that she was hiding that could ultimately have led to her death if it ever got out. Years later in 1913, a Jewish man named Hamaki Cohen aided the King of Greece. He was promised a favour in return for his help. This was the worst time for a Jewish man to try to claim back his favour but he sought the help of the monarchy who had promised him payback. When he arrived at the palace, the king was long gone, but Alice remained. As a remaining royal member left in the palace, he would appeal to her for help. Alice could have ignored his request, but she wanted to help, where she could, and so she did not turn him away. Princess Alice took in the Cohen family and hid them from the Germans for the rest of World War II. Jews were being deported in mass numbers and there was very little that Alice could do to help, but she could do this for this one family. This was a courageous act, which if found out she would have been executed. Later, Israel's Holocaust Memorial Institution would declare her 
righteous among nations, for her efforts. She remained in Athens with the Cohens until 1944, when the Allies liberated the city. But Alice's bad luck was not over yet, and there was much more to come. The fighting continued in Athens, and although it had been liberated, the conflict still existed. Axis had finally fled, but the communist guerrillas remained, and they wanted to take control of the capital from the British. If the conflict before wasn't devastating enough, this conflict was even more dangerous, and the streets became a battleground. Alice had been a war hero, and she was not ready to give up her help yet. She was a brave woman who still had a desire to help all that she could. The streets were a dangerous place and the British begged Princess Alice to stay in obscurity, out of the danger, but she didn't listen. She walked the streets brazenly, giving out rations to children. One man tried to warn her that a stray bullet could strike her at any minute, and her reply was characteristically witty. They tell me that you don't hear the shot that kills you, and in any case, I'm deaf, so why would I worry about that? Alice left Athens in 1947, after an eventful few years. The complete opposite to what she wished for as a life as a nun. Her son, Philip, was getting married, and Alice was intrigued to who he was marrying. We know now that his bride was the future Queen Elizabeth II. Alice had become used to her environment in war-torn Athens and so her trip to England must have been a strange and peaceful experience for her, after she'd been living in squalor for years. She did not have much left. Her possessions had been lost along the way, been abandoned, or she had given them to others in need. She had a few jewels left from her more privileged days, and some of these were made into jewellery for Queen Elizabeth, Prince Philip's new wife. Alice didn't have much to offer her new daughter-in-law, but she had some of her jewels used to make Queen Elizabeth's engagement ring. Alice's life was turbulent, filled with the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. She had just arrived in England after living in her war-torn country for years. And while in England, she was attending her son's royal wedding, while sitting opposite the King of England himself. It must have seemed like a distant memory that she was abandoned in an asylum and begging for her freedom. World War II was finally behind her at last, and it was time for her to start a normal, stable life. So what was she going to do? Join me in part four to learn how she slowly went senile, and how she finally got in touch with some of the family that abandoned her before she tragically lost them once again. Her life was to be taken another unexpected downfall once again. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.